Good afternoon, everyone. Mr. President, it is a high honor and a distinct privilege to welcome you to the United States Capitol for our Friends of Ireland luncheon. We are saddened that the Taoiseach um, uh, could not be here. Um, and as Taoiseachs of Ireland have been the traditional participation in this lunch over the years. But we know that he is with us in spirit and we send him bicameral and bipartisan greetings. Leader, yes, Leader McCarthy is here and from the Senate, Leader McCarthy and from the Senate, Pat Leahy among others, but he is our senior member his mother's Italian, his father's Irish, so he shows up at everything. <laughs> okay, so here's what uh, we gathered to participate. This is a cherished occasion uh, for us. It's a tradition that was started by Tip O'Neill and Ronald Reagan when Ronald Reagan was president. In the first year, it was just the president and the speaker, as it is now. But in the years that followed, the Taoiseach was an important special guest. And you might be interested to know, uh, Mr. President, that when Tip O'Neill had the first launch, he had invited 16 members, 12 of them from Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> the next year, I got invited. <laughs> <laughs> and then you came in the next year, OK. <laughs> the next year, you were proudly joined uh, by the Taoiseach Garrett Fitzgerald, and each year since. Again, that has been how we have celebrated the Feast of St. Patrick. We're grateful to the Friends of Ireland Caucus, led by co-chair Richie Neal. There are we, Richie, Mike Kelly. Where's Pat? Hmm? David Joyce, where's David? David Joyce, thank you. Hi, <laughs> Pat. Again, uh, Bipartisan, bicameral. This we are, we are especially grateful to be celebrating the Feast of St. Patrick with an Irish-American President of the United States. <laughs> the treasure ties between our two nations are, are very strong, as you know. And even though the Speaker of the House is not Irish, Italian-American, I don't have Irish grandparents, but I do have Irish grandchildren. <laughs> Sean, Ryan, and, and Leo. <laughs> and again, uh, they are just an example of the millions of bonds between our two countries of Irish-Americans. And that future of our country is strengthened by America's, if you talk about the firm commitment to our future, uh, it's, it's enhanced by Irish Americans. Uh, the um, Irish Americans have fought in the Revolutionary War, in the Civil War, have built our country in so many ways. I don't need to go into, you all know it, it's the stories of your life. And always to make a peaceful, beautiful future for America. I do want to say that uh, uh, in our shared history, peace has been a focal point. And last night, I mentioned the Good Friday Accords as a part of peace in our time. I spoke about it last night uh, because I had the privilege of being on a number of CODELs uh, to Ireland, to Northern Ireland as well. And many of us who visited Northern Ireland in the 90s saw at the border tanks, soldiers, union janks, barbed wire, and the rest. And those of us who went recently uh, to observe the anniversary of the Good Friday Accord saw a completely different situation at the border. Just a yellow line turning into a white line, making the distinction between Northern and Southern, and Northern, and, and Northern Ireland and Ireland. What was interesting, Mr. President, at that time, the speaker at Stormont, he gave a big reception for us, all children, all children, high school age children. And two of them spoke, one Catholic, one Protestant. And they both had the same message. They said that they who had never known conflict, 
they made it clear they weren't going back. Nearly two generations of children living in peace. Again, we're sorry that Tisha could not be with us today. I commended him last night, and I just want to say, uh, if he were here, uh, what I said last night, that we, I had the privilege of giving him and the ambassador, distinguished ambassador accepted on his part and gave his rousing speech. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Um, he was, oh, and the British ambassador is here as well. Hi, Paul. <laughs> and the Irish ambassador. <laughs> I said at the time of the Taoiseach that the world has been awed uh, by his handling of the pandemic because he'd had a lifetime uh, of, of leadership in terms of public health. Uh, his handling of uh, the economy of Ireland, especially during the difficult times of Brexit, his uh, reinvigoration of the government focus on housing and health care, health care being a focus in his uh, public life and his unyielding belief in the power of education for the Irish children. And we saluted him for Irish, Ireland's very important role in promoting peace in Ukraine. Peace in Ukraine. Now, in the spirit of peace and our nation's longtime partnership, let us hear a blessing offered by Right Reverend Thomas O'Connor of Our Lady of Glass. Glastonbro Abbey in Hickam, Massachusetts. Is that your parish? Reverend O'Connor. Reverend O'Connor.